Welcome back, my friends, to Aviary Attorney. Last time, remember, we've actually dealt with the first part of this, the first part of this case, namely the first week of investigative work, and now we've come into the second week of investigative re of investigative work, and more than likely go into the trial. So that's what we're going to do with this part, as we are going to conclude this part already in progress. <clears throat> now last time, remember, we've learned the location of the Croquet Monsieur, which is the Rue des Mamsets. But the only thing we have to, but the only day we can actually access that, or go to it, is on a Friday. Yes, it's on a Friday. So, what we are going to do is we are going to go into the new week. Well, the only thing we have to do is waste around for a week. So, well, we're just going to make time now, aren't we? So, let's make some time, shall we? Welcome, welcome. Oh, it's you two again. You remember us? I guess not, that's no surprise. Of course I remember. You are the monsieur who asked many questions and buy little chocolate. I'm very we more questions, eh, monsieur Hugsack? Thanks for being patient with us. Well, I need to know, have you heard us, ma'am? You say a lot of chocolate. You sell chocolate to a lot of people. Have you come across any unsavory characters in your occupation? Of course. Oh, one time I was hiking through the mountain of the Netherlands and I was accosted by an overseas tulip tasteman. I threw a feast for Dutch rubles at him, made hasty retreat. I can't help but wonder about the legitimacy of land stores, but for some reason his, tang his tangible rants don't bother me. Let me be let me be more specific. We're looking for a person called the Croquet Monsieur. Does that name sound familiar? No monsieur. Well, do you know anything about an uprising? Have you heard any rumors of rebellion in power recently? Why, Monsieur, that's always rumors of rebellion in party. The citizens are expand the shadows that bourgeois call in fear. Yes, yes, but have you personally ever heard anything specific? I really should change the voice. Let me get let me give him a better voice. Oh monsieur. That's all. I suppose we're done here. I guess it was a little city of me to look for intel about a rebellion in a chocolate shop. Perhaps I could assist you with something else, monsieur. Like what? Well, you may have noticed that this is, in fact, a chocolate shop. I am much better surface as a chocolate salesman than a rumor monger. Of course. May I have chocolate re regulation? I'm looking to buy chocolates, a box of chocolates for a friend. I have a recommendation. C -c Could it be? Am I a friend? Is this a gift 
for me. So <clears throat> Manger. If you're looking for something romantic, then perhaps an elegant heart shaped selection from Tuscany with Sucho. Romantic, you say? I, I, I don't feel. I don't feel that way about your fucking book. I call the client a sort of sculpture's gift. No, that won't work. Do you have anything that would be suitable for any occasion? Ah, oh, then. Ah. Uh, <laughs> then perhaps you want this book to 20 creamy chocolate swirls from London. They're very sweet, nobody can resist. Hmm. Jeez, that was a perfect take a fuck. Take a 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 For peace for pity's sakes, person, why are you being so fidgety? No, no reason. And cut it out, it's weird. I think those would work nicely, Monsieur Hagsack. How much are they? Five francs. Five francs? Perhaps a little steep for some, but I assure you, their quality more than justifies the price tag. I'll take them. May I have them? May I have them wrapped? Certainly, Monsieur. One moment, if you please. F -f -f -fuck. What is it? I, I just want to say. You've been a great friend, inspirational mentor, ample amounts of respect for you as person. You do know that. <laughs> you do know that these chocolates aren't for you, right? Oh. Yeah, I knew that. Good, just making sure. Don't break it. Oh, oh, oh. Here you are, Monsieur. I'm sure the recipient will enjoy them. So we get a box of chocolates. Uh, thank you very much, Monsieur, and thank you for putting up with our endless questions. <laughs> it has been a pleasure, Monsieur. <clears throat> well, we gotta, we gotta make time for something, you know. Excuse me. And as I'm looking, I just don't see where I'm going. So yes, we're just gonna spend some time. So let's go to the hidden library. Time to hit the books, am I right? If you're looking for a croquet monsieur recipes, I guess that would be in the cooking section. We aren't here for recipes, Sparson. This librarian fellow seems pretty intelligent. If there's something he's ever liked, he would know. Would you mind knowing your voices? You're stopping me during my daily crossword. Oh, I should know. It's too hard, friends. It's good to see you too, monsieur. We have questions. Of course you do. Fine, let's get this over. So, so I can get back to my puzzle. Have you heard of croquet, monsieur? Have you ever heard of croquet, monsieur? The sandwich? Of course I have it. No, I mean the person with that name. Now, doesn't ring any bells. Familiar with the Earl sandwich, if that is any help. Wait. You can be... <laughs> Wait! You can become an old fool now. I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm just checking my YouTube messages. <laughs> Funny. Never mind. I'll try something else. Thank you. Clearly, we're barking up the wrong tree. Thank you for your time, anyway, Monsieur. <laughs> I'll bid you good day. Hey, if you gotta make time, make time. That's what you gotta do. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Ah, uh, yes. The Pity Sir Pete Pierre Hospital. Salt Peter. There he is, person. Go ahead, say what you need to say. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Forrett. I just wanted to thank you for, you know, giving me an antidote and uh, making me well and stuff. It's no trouble at all. Spurson, wasn't it? Of course, there's the small matter of a debt. R right. Let's see. One hospital bed, one dose of specialized antidote, expert medical care from the attending physician. That total comes to 500 francs. Ah! Uh, well, can, can I get advance on this month's play next month? And maybe a month after. Calm down, Spurson. I'm sure the doctor's a reasonable man. He'll surely allow you to pay in installments. Of course, of course. And thank goodness, with my current wages, I should be able to fully pay off the debt by the 20th century. Hey, your pay isn't that bad. Now, now, there's no need for quibbling. I have a suggestion. Yeah, Monsieur Zelay, yes, if you do some pro bono work for me, I may be able to knock the bill down a little. Maybe to say 100 facts. Oh, that sounds much more manageable. What kind of legal work do you have in mind? Debt collection. Hmm. Sounds fun. <laughs> that actually sounds quite fun. Be a nice one, this croquet Monsieur nonsense. Yes, give us the details, Doctor. There's a man I treated for a small injury a couple of years ago. He's been invading my attempts at him and collecting all his bills ever since. I wouldn't normally pursue medical bills so aggressively, but I know that the man is a successful inventor. He can easily afford to front the bill. I would greatly appreciate it if you would pay him a visit and strong arm him into loosening his purse strings. Well, I'm not making promises, but I but maybe we could swing by and invent his house if we have a free minute. Thanks, Falcon! And thank you, Doctor! We'll dedicate every walking moment to collecting his debt. Wait, I didn't agree to that. Every working moment! Well, we're killing time in a hurry, aren't we? So actually, when doing so, we're actually doing something that we need to do because, um, well, it's on a Friday, it's a Wednesday, we're making time. Good time. Plus, this is like free time, so you can just do just about anything, so. But, um, let's see. We're going to deal with the hospital bill first thing, so. Is 
Okay, okay, I think I know what to do. At Le de Trove. No, actually, no, no, let's go to the holes. Let's see, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Let's go to here first. The hose. Doesn't take time so we can actually do this. Hey, for some shopping, are we? Oh, is it in few time? Guess this is a good place to ask about rebel uprisings as anywhere else. Actually, I was thinking of Mademoiselle Signe. I know she's not here now, but the area just reminds me of her. Oh, the flower seller. I think she moved away, Falcon. Didn't she say she was visiting her parents in Vienna? Oh, yeah, right. Let's move. We have a lot to do. But we still got time. Because, well, the week coming in for for this is um, when we finish investigation, it'll be like the ninth. So we still have time. So let's check out this Atier de Trove. Here lies the workshop of Gustav Trove, eccentric engineer and inventor. Come in. Are you Monsieur Gustav Trove? I am newer. I could be so wrong for this, but... Eh. Lawyers, let's talk. We're lawyers sent on behalf of Dr. Forrett. We're here to collect the debt that you owe. It's time to pay up, Monsieur! Oh, Monsieur, I, 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 I completely forgot about Oh, man, gee, I completely forgot about that. Listen, I would be happy to pay, but it looks like I don't have quite enough money on hand. Hmm, what to do? What to do? I know! I have a brand new invention that will blow the doctor's socks off. It's a device that will completely revolutionize the surgical field. I imagine the doctor would prefer hard cash over some gadget. And no, no, trust me, this baby will be easily... Well, 10,000, no, 100,000 francs, the doctor will love it. 
Oh, all right then. Hand of. Hmm, sorry, I did the wrong words. Oh, all right. Hand the device over, and I'll pass along to Doctor Paul Rip right away, straight away. Well, it's not that simple. The device isn't finished yet. It's not finished. I know exactly what needs to be done, but I'm missing some crucial parts. Perhaps you've time. If you've time to spare, you could help me out. Run out and correct what I need. What? No, Monsieur, that's absurd. If you have shopping to do, then you should do it yourself. Falcon, please help the man! I can't spend the rest of my life in debt! Alright, alright, no need to get all panicky. We'll hear the man out. Unleashed. Great, I'll take notes. What is that you need, Monsieur? Let's see, a copper. I need a copper pot. A pot? As in, like a saucepan? What on earth for? It's a necessary component of my invention. I can use it to build a portable electric battery. You see, when a zinc rod is suspended in sulfuric acid accompanied by a copper surface, a current is generated. Save me your scientific mumbo jumbo. One metal pot should be trivial to acquire. One copper pot. Are you sure his name is not Chester? Oh, the copper pot is important. Okay, one copper pot. I wonder where we can find one of those. I've seen copper pots at the Hall's Market. Oh, those, these, those things aren't too cheap. I can't help but feel I saw a copper pot elsewhere. Somewhere else. Hmm, what else? A uh, string! High-grade string to bind some components of the device together. Seems simple enough. I imagine the Hall's Market would have that in abundance. Can we really afford to blow our whole budget on at that market, though? Surely there's a cheaper way to acquire a string. Look, I'll have some they thread him on my jacket. Take it. The string must be higher quality than that, Monsieur. I need something that's fishing line greed. Oh, honestly. Was there anything else you wanted, Monsieur? Some books, confectionaries, alcohol, groceries, perhaps? No, no, that's everything. All right. I've got more written now. So we got our shopping list. I feel a little conned. We came here to collect on a debt and net with a shopping list. We're going through we're going to follow through and get Monsieur Trove's items, right? We'll see. <clears throat> I know it's during the day and I'm actually turning the light on. Just in case I, if I can't see this. Okay, it's Thursday, so... You know what? Can we take care of that? We can go to the halls or the pond. We still got time, so let's go to... Live. I mean, we still got time, so it's, it's not like, you know, we don't have time. So let's go to the Paz de Lille. Excuse me. Do you have a moment to talk about the cult of reason? Pay your pyramid scheme to, somewhere, to someone else, but I've got to keep the feet. Madam, it's not a pyramid scheme. Madam... Take a leaflet, at least! Well, what about you, Monsieur? Would you like to learn about the glorious teachings of Jacques Herbert? <laughs> the coat is... <laughs> the coat is it? Not today, Monsieur. I've already been in my fair of share coats. But this cult is different. A member of the cult of reason, hmm? Huh? Strange. I thought that cult died out way back in the old revolution. Hey, Falcon! That person! He looks like a run the mill cultist. I could see that, but doesn't his face look familiar to you? Very familiar. He does look familiar. Actually, the resemblance is uncanny. Shall we get his attention? Uh-oh, he spotted us. Oh, 
Wait, monsieur, we would like a, a quick whip. Go back! Teach us the wonders about the cold of raisin! He's gone. So I'm not going crazy, right? That guy was a split image of George Romans, wasn't he? I can't deny a similarity. Then again, there are plenty of wolves in Paris. Maybe there's no link at all. Either way, we've a con investigation to conduct. Let's focus on that. Right, where to first? Let's enter the Grand Gallery, since we have time. Let's see, who to question? Who to question? Oh dear, oh dear, this goes again. I recognize you. Excuse me, monsieur, it's us, the Philistines, remember? Why are they talking to me? Yep, definitely talking to me. Okay, deep breath, Eric. Hi! Uh, we have a couple questions, if it's no trouble. Uh, no trouble, no trouble at all. What's the deal with that cultist outside? Did you see the cultists outside? Uh, cultish, you mean that cult reason fell? Uh, yeah, he calls to me a few days ago. Chad for a while, not by choice of course, but because I didn't know how to get out of the conversation. Ah yes, just as worse as Jehovah's Witnesses. Got a little hand. Got a little out of hand, just that I take a pamphlet. Let's have a look at this. Be Your Own God, an introductory guide to the cult of reason by Jacques Herbert. And he even had his own signature, see? At the bottom there. To my newest best but to my newest bestest bud. Happy To my newest bestest bud, Eric, happy reading. Best wishes, Sil Sylvius. Yeah, that's definitely, um, that's definitely Scientology right there. Green Ink 2. What a fiendish color choice. That guy was such a slime ball. We aren't even close to bestest buddies. At least we know the cultist's name, Sylvius. Do you mind if we keep this pamphlet, Monsieur? Be my guess, I don't want it. Very important that we get this. Did you want something else? No, that's all. Thank you for your time, Monsieur. You've been a great help. No trouble, no trouble at all. <coughs> time for us to leave. Are we all done here? Yeah, let's go. Good call. We can always come back later if we've forgotten something. And the <laughs> yes, I, I am keeping I am keeping tabs on this conversation we're having. Real real fun conversation. I'm I'm keeping tabs on this conversation as as I'm still doing this. There's a video we did. Um, um, past uh, this past Saturday night, of course, I'm recording this on Sunday, but last night, um, we actually did a, a video on on um, Minecraft on 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 Pornhub, you know, and we had a very interesting conversation about that. Very, very interesting conversation. So, I'm keeping tabs on the actual conversation. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, uh, we're actually keeping a track on the conversation. So, since this is Friday, <clears throat> it is time for us to keep <clears throat> our appointment 
to the Rue de Montbesets. Nestled besides Notre Dame Cathedral, this dark alleyway houses a number of unusual shops and parishes. Is that him? Must be. Excuse me, Monsieur. I don't recognize you, fellas. What's the password? The password? Uh. Hey, Tom. <gasps> oh, I took you, fellas, for bird brain corpse, but you actually know the secret password. So, what do you want? Oh, good lord. <laughs> Yes, my phone is just going off the hook like that. I'm going my oh, oh man, it's just so funny. What? Well, let's start with introductions. You are the croquet monsieur, are you not? That's the croc. That's the croc, monsieur. To you, monsieur. People always get the pronunciation wrong. I'm not really hearing the difference. In any case, Monsieur Croc, Monsieur, my name is... Don't tell me, you idiot. Bringing up names can mess up an entire meeting. Why do you think I use an alias? Just tell me what you want. Drugs? Guns? Explosives? Slaves? Come on, I don't have all day. Well, to be honest, what I really want is... Uh, what do I want for Christmas? It's my tooth party. Oh, me. My Christmas time. My Christmas time! <clears throat> Information. I know you've been supplying weapons to a rebel group. I want to know everything. Who they are, where they're meeting, what they bought from you. <laughs> if I sell my customers, it wouldn't be good for my reputation now, would it? I suppose that's true. Just kidding. Money beats integrity any day. Pay me 500 francs and I'll give you the dirt. 500 francs for information? That seems a little steep. Steep. This intel is probably worth 50,000 francs to the Parisian police. I'm giving you a bargain. Listen, you pay me the full 500 right now, and I'll tell you exactly when and where you can find the rebels. Uh, uh. <laughs> Do you take checks? Very funny. And no, I don't take pocket either. It's cold heart, Napoleon's only. Well, well, well. Something murder! It's the force! Change it! Wait, wait! Monsieur Crook! Mon Monsieur! Come back! And never fell falcon, I'll tell the dastardly fellow. They don't get too close, person, that crocodile's got a gun! What's all this ruckus? Playing cops and robbers, are we, JJ? Are oh, you blind, Severin? That was a crock, monsieur! We were on the crooks of extracting some vital information about the rebels, but your smug interest just ruined everything! Hmm. That was the crock, monsieur. I would never want to guess. You don't sound very concerned. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm quite impressed that you managed to track down such an elusive criminal. But I have something much more pressing that I need to discuss with you. More pressing than finding the rebels? Perhaps. JJ, 
I want you to answer this question sincerely and honestly. This... <laughs> this conversation was brought to you by Random Co-op because Random Co-op, we do weird. Did you go by a different name prior to enrolling at Paris Law School? What? What does that have to do with the rebel investigation? Or to do anything for that matter? I would appreciate if you just answered the question, JJ. I need to hear from your own beak. Have you ever gone by a different name? Well, he mentioned it before, so let's get that out the way, shall we? I don't deny it. A man has a right to change his name. Indeed, a man does have that right. But why would a man do such a thing? I don't appreciate your accusatory tone. You sound just like Inspector Valete. Wait, that's it, isn't it? The inspector ordered you to dig up some dirt on me, didn't he? Answer me, Severin! What's going on? What did Inspector Valetti say? <laughs> it appears that you two are making solid progress with, the, with your investigation into the rebel group. I'm sure to let the inspector know. Where are you going? We haven't finished our discussion, Severin. We have. I learned when I came here to find out. Good day, JJ. Good day, Sperson. What? <laughs> what was that all about? <coughs> it doesn't matter. Severin's just poking his beak where it doesn't belong. Nosy. <laughs> oh, like that. So tell me about your little adventure, Sperson. You lost the Crockman Shire, I take it? Yeah. It, it, it looks like a stompy reptile. <laughs> but he ran! He ran so far away. Like a gazelle. And ran all, and ran all time of day. Hey, he did get away. I lost him. In no time at all. I see. Well, with the croc monsters, the gone on investigation has reached a dead end. Not entirely. He dropped something. During <coughs> the chase. He dropped something. Well, exactly. I'll show you. Follow me. <coughs> I think you do. I think you do. I think you do need my exercise, person. Don't judge me. <laughs> Ow. 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 Monjo, what is it now? Muscle cramp? No, my foot's hurting. I think I got something in my shoe. Well, grit your beak and bird. This is the realm where you saw the crocodile drop something, right? Yeah, somewhere around here. Then let's put our investigation hats and find whatever it is. So, what we're here for is something of real big importance. Because this will lead us to the best ending of the game if you do not have these items. The best logical outcome, I should say. So. First is the street lamp. Does that street lamp look broken to you? Yep. I think all the lamps on the street have been vandalized. The ground is covered in glass from the broken panes. Oh, oh, that explains why my foot's hurting. It does. 
There's a glass in the cell of my shoe. I was trotting on some shards while chasing after the croc monster. Oh no, my good shoes are ruined. Well, I wouldn't say good. You pay 20 cents for them. File this away in the evidence folder. File this away in the evidence folder. You want me to file away the broken glass? Yep, I'm filing an official form of complaint to the government. That faulty street lamp has ruined my shoes and I am owed compensation. I think official, I think government officials have better things to do than worry about your 20 cent shoes, person. The RCO, ladies and gentlemen. Because you can never go wrong with the weirdness that happens here. Oh, never mind. New video by Rocky Arms. Okay, I'll be sure to check it out later. Yes, I am keeping tabs of everything that is going on right now as we speak. But by the time I actually boot this, but by the time I actually port this thing up, it's probably going to be like Monday or Tuesday. Well, just what did you see about that? So they get glass shards. Are you satisfied? We have real evidence to find. Okay. So. Let's see what we got already. I see hanging bushels of, of onions. Bushels? That can't be right. It's sprigs. Sprigs of onions. How about bundles of onions? That's pretty neutral. Confederacies of onions. Okay, we're done. Fox of onions. We're done. Hello. Something on the ground here. Yeah, this! This is the thing Croc Monsieur dropped! It's a list. 40 muskets, 20 pistols, gunpowder, 3,000 musket balls. To be delivered to the sleeping city. This is invoice. I don't see any names on here, but given the contents and quantities, the goods are probably intended for the rebels. Excellent fine, Spurson. Twas nothing. But the sleeping city, where could that be? Where is a city that sleeps a lot? So somewhere in Spain would be my guess. I'm pretty sure that the location is not a literal city. For one thing we know, the city where the rebels are gathering. It's right here in Paris. The sleeping city is a code phrase, like a riddle. A riddle, hmm? Hmm. 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 Well, yeah, I'm stumped, and hmm is getting us nowhere. We must find someone who can solve it. We need a person who is knowledgeable about all manners of riddles and puzzles. No and all, huh? Precisely. In the meantime, I'll follow this way for safekeeping. Do you think the croc dropped something else? Sign difficult to read. Paint is faded. Trudeau Fruitier. Tickle Fruitier. There's no way it says that. You just made, you just made those words up. All words are made up, Falcon. Quite. Yeah, we're done here. I think we're done here. Okay. I guess we can always come back if we think we've forgotten something. So, since we have time, oh, hello. 
Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so we got, oh man, how many places? Oh man, we got Mahomes, Esmeralda, La Leon. Ooh, La Leon. La Leon. Is the room to your like, mademoiselle? You don't call me that. Ah, my apologies, madame, but what are your thoughts? Is the room suitable? It's dark cramped in the um, it's dark cramped in more than a little macabre, but it'll do. Excellent. I've hired private security to guard the entrance 24 hours a day. That's the shirt your weapons are safe. Tell me, Fra, are we doing the right thing? Of course we are, madam. There cannot be change without bloodshed, nor revolution without revolution. Surely you aren't having a second thoughts. Of course not. I want more. I want nothing more than to serve justice to the corrupted rulers of this country. When the time comes, I'll be the one to pull the trigger. Snaky, snaky. Snaky, snaky, snaky. Larry, snaky, snaky. Don't like that snaky, snaky. <clears throat> so, two days. Hmm. All right, all right, let's see. Um. Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, I can I can pull it off. I got four days, so let's see. All right, all right, let's work on... Let's work on a fountain pen. Falcon and Spencer wandering around the halls of Notre Dame for a while, but find nothing of interest. The fire is nowhere to be seen. Oh, well, that was a bust. Uh, let's go to, um... Uh, yeah, so let's take care of this, shall we? Okay, so we need a copper pot and a piece of string. What options do we have? I see Sasha Sparta's silverware store. Too pricey. Let's take it down, lunch. Okay, how about that place over there? Harry Hippopotamus Pottery and Haberdashery. That, that name just rolls off the tongue. Still too pricey. We're buying for a mad scientist, not for the Queen of England. What about that little stand? Rules, alls, and ends. Looks cheap, and I can even see a couple kettle in the back. Now we're talking. Excuse me, madam. Wait, those two look familiar. <clears throat> I recognize you. Weren't you two begging outside Chateau Crinière a couple of weeks ago? Uh, that was us. Thank you for your generosity, monsieur. We put your money to good use, see? We start a business. It rules odds and ends. We sell everything. I suppose congratulations are in order. 
It's no small feat to pull yourself out of the streets in today's economy. So, do we do we get a discount? Discount? Well, we did help kickstart your little enterprise. I suppose we are investors of sorts. Sorry, messieurs. No discounts. You gave us a donation out of gener uh, uh, the generosity of your hearts. Because you said no people! But maybe we can help you out. What is it that you wanted? May we see your copper kettle? We see a copper kettle on your stall. How much is it? 30 francs. We'll take it. Here's your money. And here's your kettle. Pleasure doing business with you, monsieur. Was there anything else? Do you have any string? Do you have any string, fishing line? Mm, there we go. Nice long reel of strong thread. Look to be 10 meters or so. Would that work? Don't think so. How much? 15 francs. No too steep. 50 francs for string? Come now, that's ridiculous. It's not only string. This is, it's a string of thousand uses. You can make a fishing rod. You can fix something that's broken. You can play cat's cradle. You can stitch some clothes with it. You can tie someone up. Okay, okay, your boat made your pitch. Still, it's too expensive. But still too much. Sorry, but there's no way I'm spending 15 francs on a piece of string. We understand. Did you want something else, monsieur? We're done here. That's all, madame. Thanks all for your help. Be sure to come back if you forgot anything, monsieur. Come back soon! <coughs> and we're into Sunday. Now, since we are actually going to do the following... We have the copper, so now all we need is the string. Let's see. Let's go over to I'm trying to think. What was that? I don't want to waste time, so that's why I'm wondering. Let me do this. Let me I can only save and quit, really. Well, shit. Well, I can always backtrack if I if I kind of screw up. So let's see. Um. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, 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 if it ain't the rule, Lord. You know, you're only big guy. I owe you. <laughs> yep, my fishing line snapped when I dragged you out of the water the other day. I had to buy a new reel. <laughs> so when I said, you two owe me, you owe me two francs for the fishing line and one million francs for saving your life. I don't have one million and two francs. Really? But you look so bourgeois. All right, I tell you what, two French for the line will call it even. 
Fine. Here's two francs. Consider it a gift of gratitude for saving my life. <laughs> Much thanks, Monsieur. Now, why are you here? Why are we here? All right. We have some questions. Uh, how sufficient? So, caught anything good? Today? Nah, Kipper. This new fishing line is really good, but we're not a bet good bait, so it's practically useless by itself. That's quite an issue. Hey, Falcon! Do you think the, the fishing line will work as the high grade string Monsieur Trove wanted? It? it just might. Say, Monsieur Kingsley, since you aren't catching anything, would it be possible for us to take that new fishing line off your hands? Sure, what's the worth? Didn't we already go over this fishing line payment business? Yeah, but that was compensation for the old fishing line. You want to buy this new line, that's a whole separate matter. Also, I saved your life, remember? And I was polite enough to not rub that fact in your face much. Fine. Fine. So, how much did the new line cost? Ten francs. There's no way that mine cost ten francs. You're right, cost one, but I added a little markup. That's obscene. Hmm. I guess it is, bit. Tell you what, you can provide me with some killer bait, I give you the line for free. Killer bait, like worms? Sure, worms, sweets, whatever. Well, so we'll be. You have some bait? Do you want to pay me the cash? I have bait. I think I have some bait that you can use, monsieur. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. A box of irresistible, creamy chocolate swells. Sparrowson can barely contain himself around them. Would these work as bait, monsieur? All these fancy chocolates! Wow, yeah! These would definitely work. Okay, so I'll just take these chocolates off your hands. And I'll give you my fishing line. And the deal's made. There you go. Wait, hold on. Now that I have a fishing bait, but no fishing line, I didn't. I did not think this deal through. Oh well. Can I help with something else? That's all. I think we're done here. Happy fishing, Monsieur. Bye, Monsieur Fisherman. I, I hate. You know, I hate being called that. So we reach Monday, which is good. So, let's go back to Atier de Trove. Come in. Hi, right, YouTube. Have you gathered? Have you managed to gather the materials I need? Yes, Monsieur. The string and copper pot, exactly as described. Here you go. What? What is this? The fancy kettle it's made of copper, I suppose. But what an odd choice. It was a little tricky to procure the necessary items, but with a bit of asking around, we managed to find suitable substitutes. There's a general store down the street that sells string and discounted copper pots and the like. I assume you would have gone shopping there. Well, no matter, no matter. Give me one minute, I'll finish assembling the device. Ta da! May I proudly present you the Gustav Trolls Mad! Magnificent Explorer Extractor Surgical Device! Trademark patent, patent pending. It looks like a pair of kitchen tongs hooked up to a stewing pot. Agreed. I wasn't expecting something so low tech and, well, bad. Hmm. Well, perhaps demonstration, Nori. One moment, if you please. Oh, God. That thing looks like junk. This little fetch quest has been a waste of all time. I suspected that this man was the was delusional from the start. 
will explain why he was being treated by a mental health professional. There's no, there's nothing to be done now. Let's just humor Gustav and until we get an opportunity to leave, cut our losses. What about my medical debt? Time for a demonstration. Get ready to have your stockings blown up, monsieurs. Ahem. <clears throat> so what we, so here we have one piece of regular pea. So so here we have one piece of regular piece of meat. Imagine, if you will, that this is a soldier. Okay, that meets a soldier. Only shape and potentially tasty soldier. I am. We have a small piece of iron. Imagine, if you will, that this is a musket ball. So our soldiers wandering through a battlefield, not a cure in the world. We know a sudden. Bam! The person that's been shot, the musket ball, has been embedded in the man's flesh. Shazam! 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 I'm scared, Falcon. He slammed that metal into the meat like a madman. Quick, messieurs, you're a battlefield medic. The soldier's wounded, and you have pressure to time. What do we do? Battlefield surgery. No, I'm not surgeon, but I was. But I think most doctors would feel around for the musket ball fragments and then carefully use a scalpel. How a king so how imprecise! Now I hear you wondering, Monsieur Tro, there, surely there must be a better way. I, I wasn't. Well, I don't wonder no more! Behold the explorer extractor! Watch as I pop the device! And then as I move the detector component over to meat! Is that in common? It is, Monsieur. When the electromagnet component of the of the Explorer Extractor detects a piece of iron, the device vibrates and emits itself whom? I must say, I'm actually impressed, Monsieur. A device that can detect metal beneath flesh. That's innovative. I've never heard of such a thing before. Yeah, but yeah, but why limit to battlefield surgery? You could purpose that thing to some sort of treasure hunting device. That will make you really rich. Hold your horses, messieurs. Hold your horses. I'm not done yet. You have only seen half of the device capabilities. The exploration part. Now you witness the second part. Extraction! <laughs> did, did that thing just... Yep. Suck the butt. <laughs> Suck out that butt like a pip from a grapefruit. Behold, the original piece of iron removed swiftly and precisely from the flesh. So what do you think? Pretty revolutionary, huh? I think that meat looks a lot appetizing than before. It's practically exploded. I uh, I've no idea what to think. Monsieur Trove, you are a strangely and mildly terrifying individual, but I cannot fault the innovation of your device. We shall pass along to Dr. Follett and let him decide as well. There we go. I think you think you're, I'm sure, the good deck will prove. I'm hungry. Let's pick up some steaks on the way back to the office. Let's not. And we come up to Tuesday. Ah, oh, god damn it.
let me see. There's a pin I need to get in which... I think I might have screwed up. I'm not sure. Let me see. I may have screwed up somewhere. Uh, give me a moment. I might have to backtrack. I'll be right back. All right. Now, what I did was, following the events of Friday, we're going backtrack a bit by heading to Saturday, and apparently I overread what happened. So... Remember about the Sleeping City? Well, the Hidden Library has some sort of um, clue as to where we need to go. One moment. Well, good news, folks. I think I am finally cleared in more ways than one. Do you think Night and Night Readles? Oh, right. Of course, all librarians like riddles. Seems like a bit of stereotype, that's all I'm saying. Stereotype or not, we have to hope that's true. That boffin is our only best chance at getting to the bottom of this. Town pour on our polite faces. He's here now. Good day, Dromeo and Dromeo. Why, good day, Monsieur. It's a pleasure to see you again on this fine day. Tell me, kind Monsieur, do you like riddles? Of course. Here's one for you, Messieurs. What has two mouths and four ears, yet talks twice as much as it listens? Uh, it, you. It's you, Mrs. You. You keep, you come in here yammering and yelling, never stopping to close your beaks for one minute. Oh, <laughs> very good, Monsieur. That's <laughs> right, I need to go into Trisco Hawks. What was that? Sorry, can't fake loud. Oh, my dear. Stop this false. You messieurs obviously have some inane ruddle that you won't solve in, so let's hear it. Go on, speed it out. All right, well, if we were to say that there's a place called the Sleeping City in Paris, where would it be? Oh, that's a new one. The Sleeping City. Got it. R really? Of course. The riddle was trivial, you see. There, there are plenty of locations that could be called a sleeping city, but only one place earns that title in pay. Oh, where would that be? We know the answer, of course, obviously. We're just fact-checking to make sure you, that you got it right. Think it through, messieurs. What kind of city is only inhabited by those who sleep all day and all night? Ah, uh, I got it! Spain! Don't be doused, person. Spain is in the city. But perhaps the monsieur is referring to the capital of Spain, Madrid. Nice looking place. It's 
first bite. A trick. It's too hard reluctantly dance, aren't you? Sleep is a metaphor. Actually, it's one of the oldest and most powerful metaphors in the history of literature. It symbolizes death itself. You know, the big sleep. The eternal sleep. The sleeping city obviously refers to a city of the dead, a necropolis. Steak, monsieur, sink. Use your puny avian brains. Dang it. Think, Monsieur Stink. Use your puny avian brains. Do we have any necropolises in Paris? Uh, of course. The catacombs. The winding tunnels of the dead that lie beneath our very feet. Very good, Monsieur. That's the first semi-intelligent thing you have managed to say all day. You have more questions, don't you? Oh, yes. There we go. Tell us about the catacombs. Can you give us a brief rundown on the history of catacombs? The cemeteries of Paris were overflowing by the end of the last century. So that's from what I last hear, from what I hear. To create space, King Louis the Fourth, the Sixteenth, ordered for old skeletons to be excavated and put into the used mine tunnels that night under the city. So with a little renovation and many years of hard work, the mines were successfully turned into a subterranean mausoleum. So what? It's basically a grave for a few thousand skeletons? Means more like. Don't underestimate the size of the tunnels. How can we get in? I know that's the bourgeois like to tour the catacombs, don't they? Correct. It was quite the bourgeois tourist hot spot some 20 years ago. But if you were to put your whole thing to pay a visit, you're too late. The church has already had all the interested fields shut fairly recently. Why would the church do that? Believe it or not, they consider the turning of the mausoleum into a tourist attraction to be in poor taste. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. They shut down all the entrances. Really? Surely there must be one or two left untouched. Mm -hmm. If there is such an entrance, it is not public knowledge. I see. That's all. I think we're done here for now. Thank you for your time, Monsieur. Mm -hmm. Good day. If the sleeping city really is the past catacombs, then there must be some way to get in. Hmm. Underground tunnel network will probably be connected to city sewers, right? So we just need to find the rock mine hell and boom! We're in Spooky Scary Sketchy Town! That's a good idea. Or maybe it connects to the scene. Perhaps some swimming is in order. You two dunces are going to get yourselves killed. If you really wish to visit the catacombs, you'd be best off asking those responsible for the closures. The... Dead... People? <sighs> the church, Munch. The church would know if any unsealed interests still exist. Oh, right. So now we have interest to, uh, so now we have Notre Dame to go to. Did you sneak out to Louvre again? I keep telling you, my brother, you can't risk being seen. There's too much at stake. But the good word must be spread, my brother. We need as many supporters as possible. No more skulking in the shadows. No more cowering in the dark. We must rise up against our Brussels. Oh, before I forget, here's your paper. I bought it. 
again. What happened to yours? I lost it. So curious, how curious. Let's sweat the petty things, brother. Let's focus on removing the obstacles that stand in the way of our father's dream. Right, like an like the annoying little bird has been poking his beak in your business. It's dangerous and close to him hoping our secret. You want me to take care of him? It would be in our interest. I've trapped the lion, but... Ah! Someone's coming. Go hide. Ah, my brothers have returned. What can I do for you today? A confession, perhaps. Actually, far away if I have permission. We want to learn about the catacombs that lie under Patty. The catacombs? You don't want to go there, my brother. It's a wretched and haunted place. I'm sure it is, but we know that the church was responsible for having the entrance and shields shut. So we figured that maybe it might, if there's a super sacred fire only entrance that only you know about. Secret entrance? That's an interesting idea. You know. You are not the first birds to have asked that. We aren't? Yes, yes, a cockerel. Paid a visit yesterday. Perfect posture and snooty, or one eye and scowling. The first the prosecutor, I think, said it was. Anyway, I'll tell you the same thing I told him. If you venture into the catacombs, you will not return. Understood. Was that a threat? No, no, it's just a friendly word of caution. We wouldn't want anyone to get lost in the endless maze, would we? Now, if you two will excuse me, I have seven to prepare. Be on your way. Damn. Another dead end. Maybe it's time to wrap this up. We can go tell the inspector what we found and call it a day. Don't just quit yet. I managed to take something from the friar's pocket when he wa when he gave his ear warning. Seriously, again? It's becoming a something of a bad habit for you. Well, go on then. Let's see what you pilfered. This. You found this pin in the friar's robes. Interesting. Actually, this is more than interesting. This is amazing. This is the exact same pin that Judge Ramos uses. It even contains the same green ink. Oh. You think it's that it's exact same pin, or do you think Romulus and Remus have just have a magic set? Oh, so you don't know. But I do know that this may come in handy. I'm going to keep hold of it. So we get the fountain pen. Still out of dead end now. My gut tells me that the friar is hiding something. But I can't get him to cough up yet. But I can't get him to cough up. Not like we can beat information out of him. Let's just go do all the stuff and maybe we'll stumble across some more clues. Maybe you're right. Let's go. So now we reach Monday. So, I shall meet you back to where we should be going. Give me a sec. Man, I thought I'd never get to where I got now. But apparently, what I did was reloaded a few saves. I basically had to do this in a timely fashion because, well... Time won't, will not be on my side because, like like I said, February 8th. We're already in February 8th, and February 9th is the, the day of the end of the investigation. So, we should have the following. The inventor's, the inventor's device, the broken street lamp, a fountain pen, and a signed cult guide. So, what 
what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Rue de Momosets. No sign of the crook came on I think we scared him off in our last encounter. So what we do now? Do you want to investigate the air? I'll chase him through again. Now this one I want to show you. The items that you should need are the Explorer Extractor, the Glass Shards, the Crux Invoice, and the Fountain Pen. Those are the only things you really do need in order to make sure, to make absolutely sure you get the best outcome of this whole, this whole investigation. Plus, I also got the information about the catacombs. <laughs> Something else in your sheet. Now I gotta cramp my leg. Too much walking. Spare me your whining. We've been we've investigation to do. So this should lead to the ninth at the Rue des Marmosets. There he is! That's the Rue Saint Shop the Croc Montier. Getting close to unraveling this whole rebellion nonsense. It's not Dodos, person. We're nearly there. Alright, let, let me just deal with this layer first. Spam? I don't think so. It's. It's from Kokriko! Seven. Well, go ahead, Spasm. Let's hear it. JJ, if this letter reaches you uninterrupted, that me then it means that I have been captured or killed by the rebels. What? Last evening, the inspector gave me a tip-off of the midnight trade between the rebels and the croc monsieur on Rue de Malsets. I intend to watch from the shadows, but I know that such a mission is a dangerous one. Wish me luck. If this is the last correspondence you'll ever hear from me, then I suppose I should end on a positive note. Falcon, you're a good friend and excellent lawyer. I'm sorry for belittling you all these years. Kind of regard, Severin Coco. Uh, the Severin Kokriko. Is, is this for real? There's no way. This letter has to be some sort of shit up. Severin's handwriting. Where do you think he is? I don't know. Well, we go alone. I don't know. But we have to go help him, right? I mean, if that trade was at midnight last night, and it's 10 o'clock now, he should, he might still be okay. Maybe. I don't know. Come on, Falcon, pull yourself together. We've got to act fast while there's still time on the clock. Bowson, I have a bad feeling in my gut. Well, yeah, me too. This, there's terrifying stuff. Now, you don't understand. I know that if... Severin isn't already dead now. He will be very soon. And there's nothing we can do about it. What are you talking about? You don't know that. I do. I'm certain. We've messed up. We've missed something. We've overlooked something vital and now Severin's fate is sealed. It's about to defeat his nonsense. Come on, Falcon. Let's go visit the room the Marmo says we might find a clue.
Come on, Spurson, keep up. <laughs> no time for wheezing. If Kokoriko was last seen around here, then there has to be a crew nearby. Right. So, let's see. Hello. There's a pool of blood here. Looks fresh. Kokoriko! I see drag marks heading towards that tunnel, which leads to the sign. If I had to guess, someone was killed here last night and their body was hastily disposed of in the river. But I see several sets of bloody footprints, too. Some are faint foot. They head that way towards the main road. So it can still be alive! Let's see where the footprints go. Two? No trade off? The first steps lead right into Notre Dame. It seems that way. Unbelievable. Where's the fryer when you need one? Forget the fryer. Let's keep following the blood trail and see where it ends up. Wait a minute, Falcon. Shouldn't we get the police involved before we go any further? Hmm. This is really, this is really getting good. I, I, I'll admit, this is really, really, really getting good. And then my cat shows up. One of my two cats shows up. Yeah, it goes a little mess because Masaki here doesn't doesn't say a word. This is an interesting start, so. And. Lovely. I got another. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um. I'm I'm actually gonna skip ahead here to see what would happen. You know what? At this point, that'd be smart. That would be the smart thing to do. Why don't you run and find a policeman, and I'll go on, go on ahead. Nice try, but I'm not abandoning you. We have no idea who or what could be ahead. I wait up. That wait leads straight down the. Where's that mouthy parrot gonna relieve me of duty so I can grab a snack? The, the trail keeps going. 
Hey, isn't that concierge Jake keep a quack? It's quack, you dummies. I had no idea you were a religious man, monsieur. I'm not. I had a career change. Private security pays much better than re regular old jail keeper, you know. Monsieur, we don't have much time, so I'll keep it brief. We're following a trail that leads to the door behind you. We need you to let us pass. The door behind me? Ha! Huh, you idiots! That door leads straight to the catacombs. You don't want to go there. Catacombs? And besides, just because I know how to get in doesn't mean I'm just going to let you pass. I've got a job to do. I'm integrity. I promise to act as God, and that's what I'm doing. You want a bribe, don't you? Bingo, what you got? Here's a present. Must be time to stand now, day or night. I bet you would love something to eat. Now that you mention it, what you got? Here, have this. Here you go, monsieur. Oh, yeah, that's the jackpot right there. Gimme, gimme, gimme. So what do you say, monsieur? Can we go on? Oh, yeah, no problem. Doors right behind me. I ain't stopping you. That's the door to the catacombs. It's that simple. Yeah, it's that simple. Well, wait, what? Were you expecting a hidden bookcase or something? Go on, go look. What idiots. They're walking straight to a pitch black maze without an, even a torch. I wonder, will they get lost or starve? Or will they find that crazy lion girl and get shot? Either way, ain't my problem. Upon entering the doorway, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves at the top of a stone staircase that spirals into the abyss below. Here, here goes nothing. They begin the descent. On new and underground pass would be the dark, but this is ridiculous. I can't even see my hand in front of my face. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, Sparrowson. Ah, uh, I think that was the last step. Now it's just twist, twisted tunnels ahead of us. I should take up smoking. If I smoked, I would, I would have a match right now, and we would be able to see what we're going. Plus, you know all the health benefits, and I will probably be calmer. Keep it together, person. I know I'll unravel this loose thread from my jacket. We can just trace the string to find our way back if we reach a dead end. Ah, good thinking. Just like thesis and the minotaur. Wait. There are any minotaurs in there, are there? Head of bull, body of bull, scary stuff? That's not... Actually, never mind. Feels like there's a gap in the wall here. And I guess the path branches. I can feel a slight breeze coming from the path to the left. The air seems a bit more stagnant to the right. Man, ain't nobody gonna be smelling no dead. No, 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 no. Okay, so we got something that smells fresh and something that smells dank. And there's no way of knowing exactly where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to get case B. So, I mean, 4B. So let's. Let's see, can I take a. Yeah, I can take a save. But. Let's take that stagnant path. The air must be getting more stagnant the deeper we travel into the tunnel, so let's press onward. The walls feel weird and bumpy. What kind of stone is this? I hate to break it to you, Sparson, but that's no stone. Uh, wait! 
So what is it? Well, we're in a crypt. Oh, oh dear. I, 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 I thought we were dealing with one or two more coffins. Not all the skeletons. Keep it together, Spurson. Severin's life is on the line. You're right. I have to stay focused. Oh, it looks like the path branches again. Oh, my eyes getting funky from the darkness. Or was that glimmer of light coming from the light path? No, I see it too. There's definitely some light on that side. Go into the light. It's definitely getting lighter. I can see my hands again. But that might just mean that we're getting close to an exit, right? Maybe this all has been a wild goose chase. Hush, listen. Voices. Voices. We're getting close. Wait, Falcon, aren't you scared? Terrified. There they are. I'll ask one more time. Good. That's that. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted right there. I'll ask one more time. What is your name? Are you with the police, the royal guards? Speak back. Yeah, Bomo. We've been here all night, simply ain't talking. You didn't react to coaxing, didn't react to torture. Maybe it's time to, you know, answer some justice. Justice. <laughs> that word. I'm the first to find the crows. You want to know who I am? <clears throat> Fine. My name is Severin Kokriko. I am a public prosecutor for the court assists. Well, Savvy, it's been a pleasure, but we can't have Big Ivan's part rotting around our base of operations, can we? So, for further ado, our airborne sent you to. Wait a minute, Piero. There's no one they spy. Because he's a prosecutor! No, because he's the bastard who condemned my father ten years ago. Oh, are you sure? Oh God, I know who she is. Oh God, if Bomar is who she says she is, oh God, she's, oh God, she's a fun karma. Oh God, she's a fun karma. She's, she's the animal version of Francisca von Karma. Oh shit. I had my suspicions when I saw his monk air of arrogance, his holier than thou glare. But now that I know his name and occupation, there is no doubt. Do you remember Bert? Do you remember the trial of a homeless lion in the winter of 1835? What was your father's name? John. John Beaumont. What were his crimes? His only crime was trying to feed a starving child. He took a handful of vegetables from a grocery stand, not out of greed, but out of sheer desire to see me survive. But he was seen by a policeman, another arrogant cockerel like yourself, actually. So my father was thrown in jail, dragged to court. I had the privilege of watching the proceedings from the stands. I remember your sharp words. This man is a thief. This man is a scoundrel. He deserves the harshest possible punishment for his crimes. You didn't care about the consequences. You didn't care about why my father did what he did. All you cared about was fulfilling your lust to see a criminal behind bars. My father received a sentence of five years. He died on his third. Do you remember him? Mademoiselle. In all my days as a prosecutor, I've seen over thousands of cases. I'm not going to remember a single bread thief. You rotten canard! We're all just insects to you, aren't we? Who cares if a child starves on the street? As long as you put enough criminals behind bars to meet your quota, am I right? Your silence speaks volumes of your guilt. Severin Coco, 
You've been tried by the people of the Second Republic. We found you guilty on accounts of conspiracy, of the murder of the croque monsieur, and of the murder of my father, Jean Beaumont. Oh, I've been found guilty. Mademoiselle, if you want to shoot me so you can fulfill your revenge fantasies, then by all means shoot me. But don't pretend for a moment that this mob resembles a court of justice in any form. A court of justice? Now there's a contradiction. Bird, you know nothing of justice. Oh shit! Fair Remus, read this man his last rights. With pleasure, madame. Falcon! You have to make a move! Say something! I object! Alright, I'm going in. I'm coming too! No, I need you to get out of here. F go find the police. Royal guard. Anyone. I'll stall for time. Falco! Uh, okay, I'll go get help. Do you have any last words? Just pull the bloody trigger and be done with it. WAIT! 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 He's right. There's a terrible trial. No, there's no evidence. No dictation. No thing. He's right. This is a terrible trial. There's no evidence, no defense, no examination of the facts. And if you see here, I have them. I'm showing that to you viewers that I have this. You've dragged a man off the streets and decided his fate based purely on your own prejudices. Prejudices and wins. How the crook is this blubbery thing he is? I'm this man's defense attorney. I'm J.J. Falcon. Double J. Falcon. J.J., what are you doing? Defense attorney, you're a raving loony what you are. Oh, sorry, I have seen this monsieur. He's dropping on our conversation before. He cannot be trusted. Everyone, please, hear me out. Who do I appeal to? First, Piero. Piero, we've only met on a couple occasions, but you seem like a good person. You what, mate? You don't know that. You don't know the first thing about me. Well, regardless, you seriously, you see something wrong with executing a man without trial? <laughs> nah, we need a bad France. Well, we well we all treat as equals. Bloods, gods be, gotta be spit to do that. You see, Falcon, this man's death is inevitable. For the good of France, and in the name of justice, he must be killed. Justice. There's that word again. Madam, I won't, pre I won't presume to know who you are or what you stand for, but shooting this man right now would not bring you justice. It would only serve to satisfy your desire for revenge. Justice. Revenge. What's the difference? Fairness. Or rationality. Doesn't matter. Let's be fair. Fairness, madam. Justice offers the accused a chance to defend themselves and ensures that both sides are, e as, are treated as equals. My father was not treated as an equal. Then maybe this is your opportunity to be the better person. Thank you. Madame, 
Surely you aren't entertaining the words of this heathen? Fine, Falcon. We'll play this your way. We shall have a formal trial for the murder of Croc Monsieur. Excellent. Shall we head back to my office and file the necessary papers? Don't take me for a fool. You'll, ru you'll walk us right into a trap. We shall have this trial right here and now. Right here? In the catacombs? It's a good place as any. I suppose we'll be needing a judge. I volunteer! No, thanks, Piero. We're trying to form a courtroom now, a circus. Aww. Just go see how the security's doing, Piero. We don't want any more spies wandering in. Bye, yo. Perhaps I can help, madam. You know that I'm a pious man, after all. Okay, Remus, you can be our judge. And I will lead the prosecution. What about the jury? With due respect, I don't trust your peers to be impartial. Look around you. As we speak, we are being watched and judged by countless dead men and women. They shall be our jury. That may work as metaphor, but in practical terms... In practical terms, it is you... It is me you have to convince, Falcon. Convince me that this bird is not guilty. After all, I am the one who holds the gun. Well, it looks like we are ready to get started. Ahem. The trial of Sifian Kokoro is underway. He stands accused of the murder of the man known as the Croc Monsieur in cold blood. Madame Mo Madame Bouma. Please explain the details of what happened. Very well. Last night, at the stroke of midnight, two gunshots were heard on the Rue des Marmosets. Pierre alerted us, and we managed to arrive before the police did. On the scene, I saw a man known as the Croc Monsieur, a good friend of ours, lying in a pool of his own blood. Standing over the body, I saw the murderer, Severin Cocorico, still clutching his murder weapon. Am I to understand that you didn't? Not witness the crime firsthand, Madame. That you only saw the aftermath. Yes, but one of us did happen to see the incident itself. Mom, Bo, Mo, I found this here pigeon rolling around all tunnels. I'm no pigeon, Monsieur. You spy in case. What's that I to give right now? It's all right, it's all right, he's with me. With you? He's my assistant, okay, he's my best. Falcon, I trust that you do not have any other assistants lurking around the corner? No, madame. Then take your lackey out of my sight. Falcon, what is it? I saw someone looking at you. I think he was watching us from the shadows. Another one? I don't know. But he got spooked when he saw me drop this. What's this? It's a cold pamphlet. A cold pamphlet? Well, I better be, well, I'd best be getting back to the patrols, eh? Not so fast, Piero. You witnessed crime firsthand, did you not? I did, ma'am. Then you can be our first witness. Go stand in the center. Okie dokie. Do I need to say no for something? That won't be necessary. We trust you. Just tell us what you saw that night, Piero. Okie dokie. Also, I played today. Croc Monsieur was just minding his own business on Rue de Marmosets. And all of a sudden, this air broke over Rooster. Bam! Rock with me going, Hank. Bam! Rooster fired. Croc choked to throw. You didn't have the strength. Croc Monsieur drew his own gun. Bam! Croc fought back. So to clarify, Croc kicked shot first. Yes, ma'am. No question that. What happened next? Uh, I knew you guys, Fontaine, Ramus, and you, ma'am, were only a stone throw away at the cathedral, so I ran to get y your help. We all arrived back on the scene, maybe a minute after I left it, and there I saw the dead Croc Monsieur and the murderous Severin Cocorico with my own eyes. Thank you for your rip up, Piero. Something, ma'am. She Falcon, here is not the sharpest knife in the kitchen. True that. 
but to be honest, but he's honest to a fault. I trust his word with my own life. I don't doubt the man's honesty, madame. Nonetheless, I would like to cross-examine the witness. cross exam What does that mean? I don't claim to be an expert in law. That was always my brother's role in the family. But I think a cross-examination means that Falcon would like to waste our time by asking pointless questions. Actually, it means that I would like to take... Actually, it means that I would like to make sure that Piero's story holds up under scrutiny. Yes, I'll be asking questions, but only questions that directly relate to the case at hand. Clearly, as point, as point in this stalling tactic, madam, shall we put an end to the trial? No, we will let the bird have his little cross-examination. But I'm warning, Falcon, don't mess with me. Don't mess with you. If I get the slightest inkling that you're rambling to stall for time, I'll end this trial on the spot. Do I make myself clear? Start questioning Cockroach Girl's shoe size or the color of Croc Monster's underwear, and I lose my patience. Yeah, I get it. Instant cross examination. Plain as day? You claim that you saw the incident as plain as day. Yep, plain as day. Crime occurred at night. Here, I would like to remind you that this crime occurred around midnight. In February. On an overcast, moonless night in an unlit alley. What's your point? It would have been too dark to see. It would have been dark, so dark that you could not possibly have correctly identified the people involved. Hey, I swear I saw what I saw! Hold on, Falcon, you slipped up. You say that the alley was unlit, but I distinctly recall there being lanterns all the rude in Mama's heads. Oh, oh that's right, that's right! But it didn't love the Lumiere. There's a gas lamp on every street. You're right, madam. Beaumont. There have been street lanterns all over Rue de Mom's sets, but they wouldn't have been any good. Because I found these on the Rue de Mom's sets. The street lamps over Rue de Mom's sets were broken. They are completely non-functional. As proof, I present the glass shards that line the alleyway. These shards originate from the panes of the broken lamps. And I still got the hose in my... in the sole of my shoe! Double proof! Double proof? Those shards... Those shards could have come from anywhere. You could send one of your underlings to see the broken lamps for themselves if you want. And waste more time, I think not. This sounds like a stalling tactic. Excuse me, Madam Beaumont. I don't remember whether the street lamps were or were not broken, but I do remember that we had to use a torch to light up the scene. Ah, you saw all you own! I'm just saying, Falcon might be right. It was particularly dark, so it's possible that there weren't any, there were any lit lamps. Oh, you say I'm alone? I'm doing with buddies! Stop quibbling, both of you. Maybe the lamps were broken. Maybe they went. Doesn't matter. I know that Pierre's testimony is accurate because I, personally, saw the rooster at the crime scene one minute after Piero did. One minute? That's plenty of time for the real murderer to escape and for a passerby to stumble upon the scene. Is it not? You must acknowledge that it is a possibility. I acknowledge nothing. There's an inkling of doubt. You know that there is 
the slight notion that Piero may be misremembering what he saw. Delta badge at the witness, Monsieur Falcon. I wasn't perjuring. On to the next witness, Madame Beaumont. Do you have anyone in mind? I do. There's someone among us who is something of a con concierge. A man who knows everything there is to know about the craft of weapon. Uh, the craft of weapon, man. Oh, that's me, Dean! Shut up, Piero. Get off the stand. Y yes ma'am. I call Fontaine for it. Very well. Now, Fontaine, is it true that you are a gun specialist? Oh, I hate to brag what? Yes, I know about guns. They're, me they're mechanics, they're beauty. Have you ever heard about the revolver mechanisms of Americans developing wonderful stuff? Fontaine, let's just stick to the guns that were found at the crime scene. Tell us about those. Oh, right. Very well. <coughs> this is the gun found on Severin Kokoriko's person at the time of arrest. This is a standard issue percussion lock. Shut out. Zend Gendarme Pistella, 24cm length, 15mm caliber. Lots of police and soldiers carry these still things. It's a gun that says, I'm a reliable man of the law. That sounds like our Kokoriko. Does it? Kokoriko always told me that the riding crop was a self-defense self weapon of choice. Strange that he had a gun in the first place. So we get the gendarme's pistol. And this is the gun found on Croc Monsieur's corpse, clutched tightly in his hands. Turn off pistol. Double barrel, I've handled 20 centimeter length, 13 millimeter caliber. This is an exquisite and highly customized gun. It's one kind. Whoever used this weapon knew their stuff. Croc Monsieur was a legendary arms dealer. It's no surprise that his personal weapon would be something so flamboyant. So we get the turnover pistol. But what's really fascinating about the Croc Monsieur's gun is the ammunition. See, the ball of the pistol has been fitted with a set of groups. Please stop, Fontaine, I didn't call your peer to show... Please stop, Fontaine, I didn't call you up to hear you show off your gun knowledge. Tell us what you've uncovered when you examine the Croc Monsieur's bullet wound. Ah, right, well, a red bullet was embedded in the middle of the croc monsieur's stem and appeared to have straight angle of injury. So in other words, the croc monsieur was facing his killer when he was shot. That's right. Other interesting point was that the croc monsieur's outer clothes were singed. This typically occurs if a person is close enough to a gunshot to be directly burned by the gun's muzzle flash. And how does a person have to be... And how close does a person have to be to be burned by a muzzle flash? It's less than three meters, I'll say, five at most. Five at the very most. Then there's no chance that there was a rogue sniper on the rooftops. Croc Monsieur's killer was standing in Rue de Montsets themselves. As is plainly evident, only one person was found in the Rue de Montsets at the time of the incident. Prosecutor, Prosecutor Coquico. That's it, madame. I think you just unequivocally prove this bird's guilt. Not so fast. I would like to cross-examine the witness. I don't think so. You're overstepping your bounds, bird. Let the lawyer try, Remus. When he fails, there will be absolutely no doubt to anyone in the room that Coquerico is nothing but a bloodthirsty murderer. Okay, now what to ask? About that turnover pistol, Fontaine. About that, about the Croc Monsieur's turnover pistol.
Tell us about the ammunition. You're about to say something about the gun's ammunition before Madame Beaumont cut you off. Could you could you give us the details? Oh, great. Oh, he'll never stop talking. I'm glad you asked, Falcon. See, as you probably know, most bullets are just small, rounded balls, right? But yeah, that's but that's not the case here. This particular weapon uses advanced iron tip, aerodynamic, carefully grooved. Actually, it would be quicker if I just showed you. Take a good look. This is an iron tip mini ball. It is a very, it is very rare, top of the line technology before last night. I had never seen one of these in person before. Like I said, that croc monsieur was a legendary arms dealer. It only makes sense that he would have access to the latest weaponry. Where did you find this bullet, Fontaine? In the turn of a pistol chamber. There we go. Hold on. I'm confused. I thought the croc monsieur fired his gun, so how is it possible that his gun was still loaded with a bullet? A turnover pistol is double barrel, like a shotgun. This means that it can hold two bullets at once, ready to be fired in quick succession. I see. But Cockman should fire one bullet, but die before he could fire a second. I trust that you have no more questions about this matter, Falcon. We've wasted enough time. Where's the other bullet? Not yet. Where's the other bullet? What other bullet? The fired mini ball. There were two shots that night, remember? One from the assailant and one from the crocodile. I scoured the scene for, the f for a couple of minutes. Couldn't find it. It's a pity. It would have been great to have two of these magnificent bullets. Madame Beaumont, did anyone find the fired mini ball in Cocorico's body? In his body? You're asking if Cocorico was wounded by the bullet? Now that much is plain to see. So, again, I must ask, where's the fire mini ball? Well, I don't have any clue. What are you trying to get at, Falcon? Isn't it obvious? If the bullet wasn't embedded in the alleyway wall, and it wasn't embedded in Kokoriko, that mean, then that means... <sighs> it's inside the murderer. The bullet hit the murderer. The real murderer. It must be still embedded in whoever attacked the cook, Monsieur. Ludicrous notion. Makes perfect sense. The double barrel turnover gun. The missing bullet. Fine, no human. Let's say that a bullet did indeed hit the real perpetrator. What of it? Well, it's only been a few hours since the shooting. Presumably, the person would still have the bullet lodged in them. Find the person with the unique iron mini ball embedded in him, and you find the Viet murderer. That's reasonable, but we don't have time for, we don't have time nor resources to search every system of Paris to uncover the injured gunman. You don't have to search everyone in Paris. I believe the murderer to be someone in this very room. Oh, you think we have a traitor in our ranks? Nido, this was obviously a planned attack. Someone invited Cocorico and the croque monsieur to the same place at the same time in order to create a setup. Only someone with Rebels' connections could engineer such an event. This is ridiculous. Are you really saying that someone in this room was shot last night? That's clearly untrue. A bullet moon can be concealed, perhaps if you were... Perhaps if you all were to take off your shirts. No, I'm not have. Ev no, I'm not having everyone in this room stripped down to their knickers just to cater your, to your outrageous theory. If you can't think of a more reasonable way to prove your stray bullet theory, then we can end this damn trial here and now. Uh, more reasonable way? I, I have a more reasonable way! What are you thinking, Falcon? Isn't it obvious? We have the perfect way to uncover whether someone has been shot. It's a genius solution! We have with us The Explorer Extractor finds your most bullets. Uh, are you serious, Falcon? You're relying on the invention of a lunatic? I've never been more serious. Madame Beaumont, fair minutes, and members of the court, this device 
It's called an Explore Extractor. It's the latest medical technology. It looks, it looks like a children's toy. I assure you, this is no toy. It was designed to finally extract metal embedded in bodies. A battlefield bullet finder and remover, if you will. I'm intrigued. So you're saying that you just wing this device around and it finds a bullet in a person? Yes. Sort of. I don't know. We haven't had a chance to practice it with it, with it really. Out of these bats are paying you for a fool. There's no way that such a device exists. We've seen this device work with our own eyes. This person shall demonstrate. <coughs> Me? Although he will need something to demonstrate it on. We shall use this mini bolt. Here we have an iron tip mini bowl, as presented by Fontaine moments ago. Observe. I place the bullet in my closed fist. It now represents the fire bullet that is currently embedded in the murderer's body. Allegedly. Now, Spurson will demonstrate what happens when my hand is scanned with the Explore Extractor device. Uh, so, I'll just do this in... It's humming and buzzing. Is it really detecting that bullet? Absolutely. What an intriguing device. Alright, well, what would happen if I were to hit extract what now? Please don't. You remember what happened to that steak, right? But my, my, what is this feeling? It feels like... <laughs> POWER! Don't let it get to your head. Okay, I'm convinced. Falcon, Spurson, you may perform a cursory scan of each of us with that device of yours. You must stop humoring these morons, madame. What good is this doing us? Remus, they may be morons, but this test will grant us certainty of the ruse's fate. I can afford that time. Hey, Falcon, what, if, what will happen if there's like someone not frozen in this room? Most likely not. What? I stole Falcon. Get a move on you too. I must really, I, mu I really must express my displeasure that you are going along with this farce, Madame Beaumont. Let us end this trial right here. Now you can get the justice you so crave. Don't worry, Remus. My patience for this bird brain is wearing thin too. When this asinine scheme of his fails, he will face the consequences. Lucky bird scan the rooster first. He is the prime suspect after all. Okay. I'm not getting any reaction. And there must... That means there's probably no bullet lodging called Rico. So, he's innocent for sure. No. All it means is that this bird was not shot by the hypothetical bullet. Don't forget, this is all speculation on Falcon's part. Madame, I must insist that you end this. It's a fool's errand. We have other matters that we must attend to. Remus, you let me worry about our time management. Piero, you go next. All right, all right, let's get this over with. No reaction. That means Piero wasn't shot either. No surprise there, what, guys? Let's see. Next we shall test. Madam, I implore you. You're being awfully lippy, Remus. Why don't you go next? Me, that, that is really not necessary, madame. I, do, I don't want to participate in this ridiculous child's game. This is no game, and I'm issuing you an order to cooperate. I refuse. Could you shoot him, please? Piero, please, restrain me, miss. With pleasure, mum. What are you doing? Keep your filthy toes off me! I will not be manhandled by. Ow! Stop! 
and do the test. Ah, uh, Falco? I'm not getting any reaction. God, that can't be right. Do it again. There's nothing. Fair Raymond has, has not been shot, as far as this device can tell. The other nerve to manhandle a man of a cloth like that. As I said on the floor, madam, I was with you and Fontaine for the entire evening and couldn't not possibly be in two places at once. It's true. You were sitting at my line of sight exactly when the murder was supposed to have taken place. I was sorry. Right. Fontaine was sitting with us too. So that rules him out and I know that I didn't perform the murder, obviously. Which means that every suspect has been accounted for. Go sit down, Mikey. Your job's done. You realize what this means, don't you, Falcon? Your little test failed. Your hy hypothetical bullet theory turned out to be unsubstantiated speculation. Pure guesswork. Shall we end the trial, madame? Wait! There must be someone we're not accounting for. I just know it. There is someone else who could have been the shooter. It's not these. Not these either. <sighs> this be him. Fair Amos, how's your brother? The man named Romans? My brother, he was forced to flee by our oppressive government. You and I know that isn't true. Your brother's still in France. In fact, I think he's lurking in these very catacombs right now. An upset notion. Where your theories are getting more and more outlandish, Falcon. Where's your evidence? Oh, I know, I know, I can answer this one. This, I found this in the catacomb tomb. An introductory guide to the cult of reason. Thank you, Spurson. Now, Fair Ramos, does this pamphlet look familiar to you? No, I've never seen it before in my life. Are you sure? Are you sure it doesn't belong to your brother Romulus? No, there are many cultists in Perry. Maybe it belongs to one of them. Falcon, I'll take your word that your lackey found this pamphlet in the catacombs. But Remus is right. You have no evidence that the man known as Romulus is the one who dropped it. This pamphlet could have been dropped by anyone. It could have been dragged in on the side of Piero's shoe for like it, for all I know. One big fire sign! At that moment, chill ran down Falcon's spine. There was the dreaded reality. He had no evidence that the manifesto belonged to Romulus. It was just empty conjecture. Madame, please, take my word. The person called Romulus lurks in these very tunnels. You've no proof, but you have my assurance. He's floundering, madame. Agreed. I've heard enough of these rambling theories. Falcon, your respect for your comrade is admirable, and you display great valiance by leaping headfirst into the lion's den. But you failed to have convinced me of this bird's instance. Madame Bomo, I implore you. Not another word. We humored you. We've set up court and went through the motions, the motions of a trial, and now the rooster's guilt has been formally proven. We have more evidence! Enough. This trial's over! Severin Coco, you have been formally tried by the people of the Second Republic. We have found you guilty on the counts of conspiracy on the murder of the murder of the croque monsieur and the murder of my father, John Beaumont. Madame, please. JJ, it's all right. My friend, my peace. This is far from all right. Dying in the name of a new republic at the hands of rebels. That was where it's gone. It was good enough for Robespierre, right? Suffering. That's not how I wanted to go. Tend to the body, Pierre. Yes, Mum. Do you plan to kill us too? 
would I do? Why would I do that? You two have done nothing wrong. I see no reason for you to be tried, let alone executed. Your mercy is admirable, madame. But I fear if we let these two go, they will tell the police everything and you would compromise us. No, no, we promise to keep our big shot. Oh, fucking! Ah, but we cannot trust the word of potential traitors. Madame, for the good of France, we must execute the birds right now. So, my God, you are. I hate to admit it, but you have a point, Remus. This is an unpleasant situation. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Okay, I know. I'm going to give you a choice. You have two options. The first is I shoot you right here now. That's not something either of us particularly want, but it must be done. What's option number two? You join us. We need lawyers to bring... We need lawyers to help bring the new republic into fruition. Your skills will be very much appreciated. Our skills? Somebody has to draft new laws. Somebody to follow the paperwork to secure the new republic's intent... Inten Internationally, okay. Somebody has to draft new laws. Somebody has to file the paperwork to secure the new republic's internationally recognized legal status. Somebody has to prosecute the officials who corrupted this country. Wouldn't that be a glorious job? You mean prosecute the prime minister or the king? We can discuss the specifics later. For now, I need to hear a decision. What, what will it be? This is not what I wanted, but... I know something just happened. Oh, there was a gun. Could have easily just gave me the option. And then, oh no! Just... Fine, we'll join you. Besides, if if there's a way I can backtrack it, I will backtrack it. Not a problem. Fine, we'll work for you. I mean, fine, we'll work with you. Good. Then a verbal contract has been made. So what happens now? Pierre and Fontaine will lead you to the, the Canard Joy. I will finish up here and meet you in two hours. Needless to say, they shall be keeping close watch on you. Don't even think about running. Of course. Then we're done here. Fontaine, lead the way. Yes, madame. Come along, you two. You can't seriously be trusting these filthy lawyers, madame. They're probably plotting vengeance for their dead friend at this very moment. I do trust him. Throughout that trial, I got the impression that Falcon was trying to de-escalate de this situation, avoid violence. Such a viewpoint is naive, but it's exactly what we need in this revolution. But they will betray you. If they're stupid enough to even raise one feather against me, they'll regret it. And that is the end of Act Three. Such, such a thing I wasn't I wasn't going to get, but it happened. So in the next part, since there is a root split, At this point, um, yeah, we're going to stop here. And next part, the trial is going to go to 4C. To 4B to 4C, so, yeah.
So yeah, that surprise that I didn't, that I really didn't get. Well, I'll see you next time as we deal with the final act of Avery Attorney. Stay tuned for the final act.